Hello, hello, this is Johannes Wateri from Holtron. Today we're gonna take a look and code a simple application with Vico Charge. V I C O Charge. This is hands down the best chart and trend open source library for Kotlin and Compose. And by the way, it does also support traditional views if you still use them. I've been using it for now on my application and testing it and it is worth every second of your time, especially if you have to deal with dataset visualizations. It is feature rich and it is complex and uh, we're gonna start by looking at the, uh, the GitHub library and their documentation and it is top class. I never, let's say it is very rare that the uh, open source libraries such as this have this top quality documentation with it. They even have their own wiki setup guideline pages. But uh, okay, let's dive into the uh, documentation and then we can code the simple app. In here you can see the github.com Patrick, Canned Patrick and Vico. These are the formats that the chart library support. You can get different kind of a pillars and the Bezier curve trends or columns. And uh, of course, it's gonna be, you can display multi charts at the same time and it's all animated, it's beautiful and uh, feature rich. So in here, you can get the, uh, the implementation from this page and uh, while you're learning the features of this application, you might want to take a look at the wiki page because they have really cool documentation on, on the uh, coding features, elements, etc. that you can use in here. Or if you want to customize how it's showing, for instance, markers and labels and the uh, y axis. Uh, uh, numbers and change those into your own values, you can do it and uh, play it. Of course, it's API library. It's going to take uh, quite a while to learn how you are supposed to use this, but it is possible. So with me, we're going to code this basic library. I see it most useful and uh, make it just work without exception. Let's set up the dependencies. So while you're in this uh, GitHub library, you can come to a setup guide. And in here, you have a list of dependencies that you need. And in fact, the latest version is 1.11.1. .1. It's available in the GitHub page. So I have already copied these ones. And we have them implemented in our project in the Cradle with the latest Vico Charge version that I know it is this. So I'll be using Jet by Compose. So therefore I don't implement the view system. Okay, let's set up <coughs> basics so that we can have a layout to show the chart and uh, a button so we can regenerate a new set of uh, data set. So we'll see how it handles those cases. Okay, so I think we're gonna make a just a column in here. Yeah, let's make it fill fill the size of the whole screen. Inside here we will input a card which will hold the Vico chart and for this card let me see we will need to give a max maximum height of some sort We want to just say that it's going to be maybe 300 dB. Like so. Yep. 
Yes, that's gonna hold our chart and uh, maybe at the um, bottom in the column we can have a button which can say text and uh, refresh like so we don't have our own click yet in here but we're gonna add it like so and on click to do refresh like so <clears throat> okay as this is demo i'm just gonna pile up all recomposable items on on top and use them as is so it's gonna stay simple so no view models no nothing like that this time We will have our state of zero. So we're going to use this as a trigger to uh, re rebuild a new data set. And by the way, these uh, latest composables, they tend to have uh, uh, type specific mu mutable states these days and uh, so we'll be using mutable int state so pretty much when we click this we're just gonna say refresh data set int value like so and um, when this is gonna trigger we're gonna use launched effect and there's gonna be our value of int value so this is gonna force new data set for the trending chart like so okay i think we can start building the data set and all all of the uh, Vico chart elements that it requires to run. So for the elements, composable elements, first we need to make model producer, so-called model producer. It's gonna be the, the remember and there's gonna be Vico element chart entry chart entry model producer. So we'll be using chart entry model producer. Okay. And we need to instantiate that one. Next, we need to have data set for model. It's gonna be a list of float entries. So remember there's gonna be mutable state mutable state list mutable state list off and it's gonna be about float entry this is also vico element let's import that element there it is the uh, the list is empty for now and let's see next we will need line specification line chart dot line spec let's call this one data data set line spec again needs to be remember 
and it's gonna be an array around a list of line line chart let's see which one is it actually maybe this one line line spec yes okay so now we have mutable states refresh model producer this is just a remember and then we have data set so we'll be rebuilding this this is going to be mutable state list of float entries and we have a element of data set line spec okay what else do we need scroll state is remember scroll chart scroll chart scroll state here so this is also fully on a custom state for the Vigo charts. Next, let's set up the data sets. So whenever we request a full rebuild during this launched effect, we need to clear the old data and uh, we're gonna pass in the new data. So pretty much we will be saying data set for model. Clear that one and uh, all the line specifications whether we would want to have colors or widths and whatever specification for the drawing itself we're gonna say line specifications dot clear also in here <clears throat> and uh, to build the lines we're just gonna have x position zero because while we are building the data set, this is defining the X position for the next. Then we are just gonna create a list of float entries. So called data points is an error list of float entry. That's gonna hold the data that we're gonna uh, add into our data model okay so first let's if i understand the data set line specification actually in here you can specify the colors whatever customizations you want to include for each data set so we're gonna use data set line spec dot add this is gonna be our line spe spec element from the remember and in here we will say line chart dot line spec it needs to be line spec element this is gonna be simple we're just gonna have one data set line chart and we need to have a color and uh, I don't know, let's make it, do we have a green? <clears throat> yes, we can give a green color in here. If you use compose colors, this one needs to be uh, uh, to ARGB, so it's, gonna, it's not gonna accept, accept an int color type. So I'm taking composable color element and just transform that one and we have line background shader so this is we're gonna i want to have a shader kind of a gradient shader lame like so and it's gonna be dynamic say there's dot from brush and it's gonna have the brush dot vertical gradient and, and there's gonna be a list of colors like so and we say I'm just gonna use the same color of green in here dot copy and default 
all of that. This is Vico chart element also and line background start. And then we can use the similar Vico element also in here. We use the same color to shade it. Just say end in here. Okay. Now we have our data set specification how it should look. Maybe green isn't the best, but hey, I'll be using that one for now. Now we want to add our float entry data points. Hmm. So we don't have any data at this point yet. So we need to make a random data set in here. Maybe for for e in one two hundred. So let's make it loop a one hundred data set just randomly. Like so. I don't know what this is gonna feed us. Can we tell it a range? Let's say one to thousand. So we don't need to make a list. We should be able to get the random value from anywhere from one to thousand random and we need a float values in here. So this is gonna express our random Y <coughs> float value. Okay, it's gonna repeat a thousand times. Sorry. We want to have hundred a data set of hundred anywhere bet between one to thousand. Okay, that should make a stunning visualization data set. Okay. So what else? Now we need to add on the exposition at every cycle and add it into our data points. So we say the add element we need float entry x is gonna be x position and y is gonna be our random like so and we say our x position plus one as float. Okay. So now we have created anytime we request refresh, we're just gonna fully rebuild new data set. Like so with new line specifications. So you, maybe you don't need to do it like this, but in my applications, I might want to change the, uh, the appearance of the, the chart libraries, for instance, colors, width, size, whatever. Uh, a feature you want to change. So then you need to manipulate the line specifications also in here. So this is going to be first guard to avoid any runtime exceptions because there's going to be at least a, a zero division exception caused if we're not careful. So we need to say in here Mm -hmm. Okay, no guard at that point. Then we say if data points dot is not empty, then we will add that into our data set for model and add data points. Let's see what do we have in here. Do we have an error in type data set for model mutable state list of list of Yeah, that's our mistake. Sorry. So we need to already list of 
float entry up here. So data set for model mutable state list. We're going to pass in list of float entry. Okay. Like so. Maybe we don't need to guard anything in here. We can just say add new data points because it's going to be a similar than already having that list over there. Okay. And finally, we just tell the model producer set entries and we pass in the data set for model. Okay. Now we have pretty much prepared and totally rebuilt our data set for the Vico chart. Now we can code our chart composable. So here is going to be the guard to avoid any exceptions. For instance, they're making complex calculations for the size scale and there's going to be a, a division by null value. It's going to cause an exception if we're not careful. So if data set for model is not empty. So at least we need to guard, safeguard this one in here. And uh, let's pass that into our inside our card. We just don't show this data set value if there's no data because I don't know, maybe they take care of this in, in some uh, later versions, but uh, at least I take care of it now. So we're going to provide a chart style that I mean, build our chart composable inside Vico chart style. Chart style, you can pass in customizable chart style into this and make it change the theming, etc. So inside here, we need chart composable. So this needs to be composable from Vigo. And there's going to be a bunch of uh, parameters we need to fill to make this element happy. So let's start with the chart. In here, we will say line chart. And at least we need to pass in the line spec specifications. Data set line spec like so lines. So it's going to use those, I believe, to draw the colorings, etc. width of the line charts. Next, we're going to continue. We need to pass in the model producer chart. Model producer is model producer. Okay. We're not gonna, for now, we're not gonna pass in anything for the uh, start axis and bottom axis. We can fizzle around with those one in a little bit. Scroll state. That's something we do want to pass in. Scroll state. And uh, is zoomable. Is zoom enabled? Let's say true. I believe that is true as a default. And do we have anything else that we should pass in? No, not at this point. Hmm, why this is not happy? Interface, do we for any reason have now an interface. Let's see. Can we get this happy with these ones? Let's see, scroll state, chart scroll state. I believe I might have had the wrong 
composable element as a chart. There's many, many elements in here in this library and uh, I stumbled to use a wrong one. At least this should now draw us a line chart and then we can customize it just a little bit to get better understanding how to use the API. Okay, let's try. So I was able to run this chart library and it works as we expected. You can see the beautiful animations, they have anything, all, all these features set up. So we can just keep on producing our data sets and uh, it's scrollable. And we do have uh, this, I can't zoom in, but it is definitely zooming. So this emulator simulator doesn't allow me to grasp inside of that composable, but I know it is zoomable. 100%. So now to customize just a little bit, we want to add y value, uh, y values to show a scale from minimum to maximum and also the steps on the axis to uh, make it more understandable. So let's do that now. So we didn't add them in here, but now we can add them. So we need to start using so-called start axis. Uh, let's put them in, for instance, in here. Maybe start axis is remember start axis. Okay. Inside of this start axis, we can now tell a title, let's just say uh, count of values for the title, tick length, we're gonna use 0.dp and there's gonna be value formatter, this is kind of a lambda function that's gonna give you the value and something else and we can use these to uh, tell what it should show on the uh, start axis so in here we're just gonna say value value to int we're gonna add one so that it doesn't start from zero and we're gonna say to string because this is a text to be shown so to string like so because it's running indexes so to make it more readable we're gonna want it want, want it to start from one just to offset it by one then we will add we now we bottom axis okay so bottom axis is again sorry this went wrong bottom axis is remember bottom axis okay like so uh, now I misplaced everything so everything I built in here I wanted to put it on the uh, bottom axis like so and now we're gonna modify this so bottom axis is actually the x-axis in here and start axis is gonna be displayed on the y in in vertical height so top values let's say i don't know top values and uh, <clears throat> in here we pretty much don't want to add anything. We just want to say to string into into string. Pass us the value, scale values from minimum to maximum. Okay. I believe we might want to uh, manipulate the item placer in here. So this way we can affect how 
how what is gonna be the stepping how often we show the value so it might get crowded if, it, if we show all so let's limit that one we have axis item placer we have a vertical and default and now we can say maximum item max item count let's say six okay let's restart this application now and we should see yes okay now we have one two three four five and six of course and we are offsetting the x values to start from one nice this is really beautiful I believe there was also a way to uh, manipulate to not show these dash lines uh, vertically. Can we find, yes, guidelines, null. So for the bottom axis, we do want to say guidelines, null. So it's gonna, this is a matter of opinion how you like it, but if you have a crowded data set it's easier to understand with less lines definitely if we're gonna have multiple charts on top of each other so it's gonna get too crowded so guys that's how it works and it has bunch of uh customizations to be used maybe we should add the marker to end this video we're gonna add the on click marker so you can see the value okay for the marker composable, this is gonna, get, gonna be a complex class. So we'll take a shortcut and we go into the GitHub page and in their sample application. And in here we have utils, no showcase, yes, so-called marker.kt. So just to make our life easier, Let's copy paste everything we have set up in here. And we do want to now create similar class in here. <clears throat> so new Kotlin class, let's call it marker. And uh, actually it was file.kt and we can now pretty much pass in our code from Vico uh, charge sample app and now we can fetch our remembered marker from this and uh, this is complex, it holds a lot of uh, theming and visualization related parameters, so you can modify this to fit more of the stylings of your app also. This is a, a freely free code to be changed, but uh, this is how it works. So now in our main activity, I tried to uh, start coding this from scratch and quickly noted that, hey, why not use the uh, the full example from there and so in here let me see now we do want to create our we are now in our main activity okay and uh, in here we do want to say marker remember marker so we're gonna get our marker with all the built-in styles and pass in that in here and uh, fingers crossed maybe just maybe we now once we long click we should see yes the values in here so now it's it's gonna take now all the default themes the same colors of the trend we have a green trend and uh there's gonna be themes coming from the Wigo chart, but uh, you can definitely modify and change all of those. So super cool. And uh, I already managed to customize this so that we can make this uh, marker persistent. So once you click it, it's just gonna stay there and uh, it's easier to 
eye on those values for not long holding it but uh beautiful just make it yours style it as you see and uh in go and give them a star this this library is super i mean it is superb and uh go give them a star and uh, they have an active community taking care of it and i already noted that they can they actively uh, uh, address bugs for instance so address a bug in here and they're gonna ask you actively more information how to uh, find it narrow it down and they're gonna fix it and there's also comments being handled if you want to uh, explain well explain and bring forth about future uh, ideas maybe they don't take all of those because they let's say they have a solid idea where they want to be with this one and they are following it and they are addressing correct correct issues with a, a priorities but uh i love it this is business level solution and uh try it out implement it give them stars okay we'll be back